Sometimes it's best to sum up something as a true story. This is a true patient. It was a patient that was inside a psychiatric institute, and she'd been there for two years. She really knew she was not like everybody else, but somehow she just couldn't get healthy. She happened to be sitting one day listening to the radio at lunch, and it was the PMS Institute in New York City. They were on for an entire hour talking about PMS. She ended up listening to the entire time. She got very excited and went to the nurse and said, I think this is what I have. I have PMS. This is why I'm here. It's never been addressed. She got so excited, they ended up putting her in her room because they had a hard time controlling her. She even got worse. When they wouldn't address her issues, they took off her street clothes, put on posy restraints and a hospital gown. Very fortunately, the housekeeper came in, took pity on her, and released her. This was New York City, 37 degrees. She snuck out of the, the institute she was in without a coat, hospital gown that fits no one, flapping in the back. This is a woman who had never stolen anything in her entire life. She saw a lady with a purse. She took it. She jumped on a bus and landed in a frozen heap at the PMS Institute in New York City. They brought her in. They gave her IV progesterone. She's never had another psychiatric episode. She went on to get a PhD in biochemistry. That is how bad PMS can be. So now go back when you go home on Monday morning and review some of these symptoms and look at the idea because PMS frequently can be misrepresented as a psychological problem only, from anxiety to depression to seizure disorders to panic attacks to agoraphobia to eating disorders to various personality disorders. PMS can be treated with better than a 90% success rate. However, unfortunately, there is no definite, definitive diagnostic test. There is no clear course development. There are, in some patients though, in fact many, a problem with the pituitary ovarian feedback mechanism. There are some precipitating factors to PMS, oral contraceptives with progestins, pregnancies, miscarriages, tubal ligations can be a culprit. In fact, 37% of women who've had a tubal ligation develop PMS and other complications such as pelvic pain and irregular cycles. We do know that when a woman has a tubal ligation, there can be hormonal changes. The same thing occurs if the uterus is taken out and one or both ovaries are left in. We've been all taught that if you leave the ovaries in, hormones will stay the same. We're now discovering that part of the blood supply is cut when you take out the uterus. This does compromise, in some cases, the ovaries, and the patient may end up with hormonal dysfunction, even though both ovaries may be left in. The hormones in the body literally are a hormonal symphony. We could spend three days on this subject. Looking at insulin itself, it is one of the hormones of hormonal symphony when it comes to PMS. So very important that the person eat a low glycemic index program. They eat six small meals a day because symptoms of hypoglycemia can be very similar to the symptoms of PMS. Caffeine can definitely make things work. Or worse, it can increase the body's production of prostaglandins. With PMS, there does seem to be an increase in prostaglandin 2, which is the inflammatory pathway. Nonsteroidals have commonly been used to treat some of the pain that can occur with PMS. Very effective to treat the prostaglandin 2 pathway, but so are omega-3 fatty acids. They work on that same pathway. Caffeine is a diuretic. Some very important nutrients like vitamins B and C, potassium, magnesium can be uh, lowered as well when the patient's using a lot of caffeine, and of course it affects the adrenals as well. Migraine headaches can be a major part of PMS. The patient can have symptoms at ovulation. 
or they can have symptoms just before they cycle. Migraine headaches that occur at any time of the month are not generally hormonally related. Ones that occur at the same time of the month are. Estrogen changing can be part of this. So if estrogen bounces up and down, this can precipitate a migraine. A migraine can also be precipitated hormonally with what we call estrogen dominance, meaning there's a lot of estrogen and not enough progesterone to balance. This is commonly the situation that occurs with women that have migraine headaches at ovulation or just before they cycle. 